Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, eternal God, Lord, we just pause just a moment to say thank you. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. Thank you for raining down upon us, God, touching us, Lord, making ways out of no ways. God, today we give you all the praise and we give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, I pray. Good morning, church. I give honor today to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, Jesus Christ, the risen King. Today, all over the world, the world is celebrating Easter Sunday. They're giving honor and praise and tribute to our Lord and Savior. It was a process that Jesus had to go through in order to complete his assignment given to him by the Father. You see, not all assignments given to us are easy. But every assignment always causes you something. But your reward will be great. In order for us to get into the place that God has for us, we got to go through some things. Did you hear what I say? We got to go through some things. In other words, we got to go through a transformation. But today my subject is Resurrection Sunday. You see, Jesus had to go through a process in order for the Resurrection Sunday to occur. Process number one, it began at the Passover where the Last Supper took place, where one of the 12 disciples by the name of Judith, true identity was revealed. Luke 22, 2 to 3. And the chief priests and the scribes sorted how they might kill him, him, Jesus. For they feared the people and then entered Satan into Judas, surname Iscariot. Begin at the number of the twelve. And they went and found as he had said unto him, and they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down with the twelve. This will come from Luke 22, 13 through 22. And let me read that over again. And they went and found as he said unto them. And they made ready the Passover. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Jesus knew it was getting close to his destiny. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until the fulfillment in the kingdom of God. And it goes on to say, and he took the cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God will come. And he took bread and break it and, and thanks and break it and gave them gave unto them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed it for you. But before, behold, the hand of him that betrayed me is with me on the table. And truly the son of man goeth. And as it was determined, but woe unto the man by whom he 
is betrayed. You see, church, sometimes it's the very ones that walk with you, go shopping with you, eat at your table, call themselves your friend. It's those very ones that will betray you. Process number two and leading to Resurrection Sunday. It proceeded into the garden. And this also comes from Luke 22, 39 through 54. And he came out and went as he went was forth to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, pray that you enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast and kneeled down and Jesus began to pray. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthen him. See, sometimes all of us need a little strength. And when he rose up from praying, and was come to his disciples. Jesus found them sleeping for some. Sleeping, saints, it's time for the saints to wake up because it's praying time. See, we got to stop riding on somebody else's prayer. See, you don't know whether your prayer is getting through or not. But you got to learn how to go to God for yourself. See, prayer is communing with God. I believe that you just learned how to have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your trouble. God will answer your heart's cry. Can I do just one witness? See, so many times we're riding on somebody else's prayer. We don't know whether that person is praying for us or with us. But when I learn how to have a relationship with God, I can learn how to get my prayer through myself. You see, saints, it's time to wake up because it's praying time. And the Bible goes on to say, and while he yet spake, behold, a mother too, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve went before them. And drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto Judas, Betray thou the son of man with the kiss. See, sometimes the very ones that you thought was on your side, that's the very ones that will betray you. And you said during the course of action after the mother tool arrived, it began to say that one of the disciples smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. You see, Jesus wasn't all about violence. Then they took him and led him and brought him to the high priest's house. And Peter, the disciples, followed from a far off distance. Let me tell you about process number three that led to the resurrection Sunday. They led Jesus to the judgment hall. This will come from Mark 15, 1 through 15, 19 through 20. And straightway in the morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. They were trying to figure out what to do with Jesus. And Pilate asked him, Are thou the king of the Jews? I like how Jesus handled himself because you don't have to speak for yourself. 
And he answered and said unto them, Thou said. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but Jesus never said a mumbling word. You see, one day the works that we have done is going to speak for us. One day the service that we have rendered church has got to speak for us. And it says, and Pilate asked him again, said, answer thou nothing. Behold, he was telling Jesus, behold, many things, many witnesses are against thee. But Jesus answered yet nothing. So Pilate marveled. Now at the feast, he released him unto one prisoner, whoever they desired. And there was one named Barak, which lay bound with them and had made many, or oh, oh, Barabbas was, he committed murder. He was a robber. But when Pilate presented him and Jesus before the crowd, and the mother too was crying aloud, began to desire to do as he had ever done unto them. But Pilate answered them saying, will ye that I release you, the king of the Jews? See, Pilate had no fault in Jesus. He wanted to release him. But Pilate knew, for he knew that the chief priest had delivered him from envy because he detected that the Jews envied Jesus. Pilate could see that there was nothing wrong with Jesus. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. And Pilate answered and said unto them, what will ye then shall I do unto him which is called the king of the Jews? These folks that was in the crowd was the one that Jesus had prayed for. The one that Jesus had healed. The one that Jesus had delivered. But they cried out against Jesus and they said crucify him. Crucify him. Then Pilate said unto them why? What evil has he done? Ye call him the king of the Jews. What evil has he done? And they cried out more exceedingly, crucify him, crucify him. Resurrection Sunday is almost here. So Pilate willing to commend the people, release by rabbit unto them and deliver Jesus. And when he had scorn him to be crucified. And in the judgment hall, the Bible begins to say in Mark 15, and they spoke him on the head with a reed. And they spit upon him, bowing their knees and worship him and made fun of him. They mocked him. They took off the purple robe from him and put him on his own clothing and they led him out to be crucified. See, it's almost time now. It was finishing. It's almost going to be finished at the cross. And as Jesus was carrying the cross, the Roman soldiers summons Simon the Serena. To help Jesus bear the cross. You will find this in Mark 15. 21 through 39. And the Bible goes on to say. And when they had crucified him. They parted his garments. Casting lots unto him. What every man should take. And it was the third hour. And they crucified our Savior. And the subscription of his accusation was written over his head. The king of the Jews. And with him they crucified two thieves. 
one on the right hand and the other on the left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which said, and he was numbered with the transgressions. One said, save thyself, come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priest mocking said unto them himself, strives he save others, why not save himself? But see, Jesus had a purpose. Jesus had a assignment that he had to fulfill. He had to do it because of the will of the Father. The Bible goes on to say, they begin to say, let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they were crucified with him. And when the sixth hour was come, the Bible continues to say there was darkness over the whole land. Until the ninth hour. See church, something happened at the ninth hour. At the ninth hour, the Bible said Jesus cried out with a loud voice. And some began to interpret what Jesus said. And the interpretation was, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And some thought that he was calling on another prophet. To Jesus and fill the sponge full of vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink, saying, Let him alone. Let's see if the prophet Elijah is going to come down to him. And the Bible goes on to say, Now that Jesus cried with a loud voice, and then the Bible said, Nobody took his life. But the Bible said he gave up the ghosts. And as Jesus began to give up the ghosts, it said the veil of the temple was rich, twined unto the top to the bottom. And when the central, which stood over against him, saw that he cried out and gave up the ghosts, see, he began to really identify that this must be, yeah, this got to be the son, this truly is, this man was the son of God. But see, getting ready for the resurrection Sunday, when the process was completed, Jesus was laid in a borrowed tomb. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? A borrowed tomb. Yeah. Because Jesus knew that he would need the tomb for long. And this comes from Mark 15, 46 through 47. And as Joseph, he brought fine linen, took him down off the cross, wrapped him in the linen, laid him in the sepulchre, which was hewn out of the rock. And roll a stone in front of the sepulchre. And then the Bible goes on to say that Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, beheld where he lay. And it says, when the salvage was passed, that Mary Magdalene, the Mary, the mother of James, and Shalom had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And it was very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came to the sepulchre at the rising of the sun. And they began to talk amongst themselves. Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulchre. It's getting to be a resurrection Sunday. Was, and I begin to think about this thing, was the stone for keeping the people out? <laughs> I wonder the stone was trying to keep Jesus in. See, the Roman soldiers, they knew the scripture. They knew that the word said in three days, shut. Jesus was going to rise again. Yeah. And getting on back to the word. 
And when they look, they saw that the stone was rolled away. For the stone was huge and very great. And they began to enter into the sepulchre. They saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. And the women began to be afraid. But then the, then the young man that was sitting on the right side began to say unto them, Be not afraid. Ye see Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold, this is the place where he lay. I'm talking about Resurrection Sunday. Jesus got up. Couldn't no grave hold his body down. Oh, grave, where is your hold? He got up, all power in his hand. Resurrection Sunday. Jesus got up, because he knew we needed saving. He looked down through the years, and he knew we needed a God. Now, we celebrate today. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because God lives, oh, my doubt is gone. Resurrection Sunday. Now, somebody in the home now, ought to just cry out. Resurrection Sunday. Now, Jesus lives. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for loving us more than life itself. God, we have experienced so much heartache, disappointment. Knowing all of this, Father, you're still willing and you gave up your life and you became God to us and you rescued us. Jesus, because of your great sacrifice, we can spend eternity with you, Father. Jesus, there's no pain that you can't conquer. There's no hurt or disappointment, Master, that you can't heal. There is no life that you can't transform. Your death and your resurrection prove that there's nothing, nothing impossible for you, Heavenly Father. Amen, amen. Resurrection Sunday.